Joe Siegel. I'm 93 years old. I live in the city of Vancouver. I've been here since 1945. That makes it about 73 years. I love this city. I love the community. I love everything about life. I grew up with very little exposure to Jewish community, Jewish religion. I was in the army, I was overseas. I was in the army for three years, I was overseas. Too young for France, but I landed in Belgium. I went all the way through with the infantry and finished in a place called Oldenburg in northwestern Germany. We were to move off into Wilhelmshaven, but we knew the war had to be over because the German army was, we all, all we could do was push them into the North Sea. So where did I become community focused, if that's the right word? You learn a lot in the army. When I came to Vancouver, I met my wife. I said, that's a girl of my dreams. I got married to a wonderful wife, and she taught me the responsibility that each of us has as a Jew. And so I learned that charity begins at home. What do I, what do I mean by at home? I mean the Jewish community that you live in. You have a responsibility to support institutions like the old folks' home, the Briar home, the dormitory, and every little sub-educational institution that has sprung up over the years. When I came here, the community was 700 people, 700 families. And there were those that have and those that have not in the Jewish community. And today, if you ask a non-Jew how many Jews there are in the city, how many Jews in the country, how many Jews in the world, you'll hear numbers that are far beyond the real number. So I've asked many people, how many Jews in the world, non-Jews? And they'll respond, at least 200 million, 300 million because they haven't got a concept. They can't understand why, how a small community has been responsible for the creation of so many things in so many fields, whether it be medicine, whether it be development, whatever it is, because you have to help yourself, you're successful. If you don't have a motivation, you're going to lean on somebody else, it's easy. That's why, as Jews, we have to support our community, not in a token manner. Giving to our community is not what I term a mitzvah. It's an obligation. We, as Jews, have to support the Jewish community. When you live in a community, and if you're involved in the community, and involvement is not just giving. Involvement, you have a choice. You work or you give. If you have the money, it's easy to write a check. If you get involved, you're giving of time and energy. And if you can, you have to do both. Very, very few people have an involvement in a community and at the same time fulfill their obligation from a charitable viewpoint. I have been involved in every organization in this community, Jewish and non-Jewish, whether it be the community fund and council, and if you go back through the records and I haven't, and I think I was the first chairman to chairing emergency campaigns to be involved in Talmud Torah and at the same time being involved in the non-Jewish community because there has been limited representation. When I 
20, 30 years ago, when I was involved in United Way, or I was the chairman, the chancellor of the university, whatever it was, there were very, very few other ethnic groups other than the Jewish community. There was either an Anglophone or a Jew as a minority. Today we don't see any Jews. We see the Chinese, we see the East Asians, but we don't see the Jews. But in the olden days we had a Jack Diamond, we had an Arthur Folks, we had a Joe Cohen, we had guys that are all gone to rest now. And I happen to be one of the very few that's still around, but I remember all this. And that's how a community is built. You can't say, we can't do it. You do say, we're going to do it. And then you do it. And there's nothing wrong with having a little vision and assuming a little risk. Because that's how everything in this community was built. From the Talmud Torah in 1948, that little concrete building to what it is today. The Sharetz Eddick, 1948. I could go through all this, but it'll take you six hours. <laughs> I'm going to be very straightforward. Yep. I think we have some leadership in Federation today. I think that the guy that we have, we should treasure because he has a balance. He's not just focused on fundraising. He tries to create a cohesive environment without offending anybody. And in the process, people become involved and people experience the joy of giving, I call it, because there is a joy in giving. And if you've never given, you've never experienced it. So, this community has changed and you require leadership. And leadership is not just taking the position. Leadership is fulfilling the position. So you never, if you're going to canvas and you want to solicit, and we're not, I don't think we're raising near the amount of money we should in this community for the number of wealthy, new wealthy and old wealthy people that we have in this community. And it's only a handful that really understand and the rest contribute because they have to. So where do we go from here? We haven't tapped the community. We have to make them aware of the need. And you know, there are some people in the olden days that would say to me, and I've been the canvasser and I chaired the emergency campaign in 67, and I left my business, spent 10 days at the community center. And you provide the incentive. What is the incentive? A sense of accomplishment. If you look at the community today, you've got Surrey, you've got White Rock, you've got Richmond. And because of the cost of living in Vancouver, they don't have an alternative. If you want to live with dignity and reasonable comfort, you have to migrate. So we have to broaden our base and understand that we have not splinter, but other segments of the same heart. So when you create a, a synagogue in Richmond, you're servicing the Jews that live in Richmond. So if we neglect as a Jewish community and say that we don't have a responsibility to support all of these suburban entities, then we're going to lose our Judaism because we're the fulcrum and they're the spokes. 
and it's a wheel. And if you start to lose spokes, the wheel will collapse. That's exactly the way it is. An obligation to give is no different than saying you have to help your fellow man. So giving is an obligation we have to sustain. Giving is really selfish. We do it for many reasons. We do it because of peer pressure. We do it because of uh, if you had cancer, you're going to support cancer. If you had a heart attack, you're going to support heart. But you have to support everything. When you give, you can't say, I don't believe in this, and I don't believe in that, and I don't believe in that, but I do believe in something. And it doesn't matter what that something is. It's universal. You haven't, you don't pick your spots. We're a community. Everything in this community is important. You're not religious, but you have to maintain the religious institutions. You don't believe in looking after the infirm, but you have to. It's part of the community. So what's the net result? If you have no synagogues, they can't sustain themselves. You destroy the very essence of survival. We have to, we have to lift the saran wrap on the community and let it breathe and make everybody understand. If everybody understood, because you're a Jew and because you have a Jewish federation, you have to support it. Because without that sustenance, you're going to wither and die. You know, I chaired a campaign, and we raised $4 million, the emergency campaign in 67 or 73. I chaired both with Arthur folks, who's gone now. But I had calls from people that said, what can I do? Because it was a matter of survival. I had calls from non-Jews. I had a call from Jimmy Patterson. He said, I want to contribute. Because this was an emergency. So why do we wait for the emergency to recognize the obligation? Avoid the emergency by fulfilling the obligation, discharging your responsibility today rather than wait for tomorrow. And the same applies with people of means. Don't wait till you're gone. Do it while you're alive. Do it when you can see the results, the fruits of your labor. And by that I mean you labored to create the fruit. Now you're going to give the fruit and see the pleasure in giving. And that's the way it is. We have a community, and I'd like to put my arms around it and squeeze it and see what comes out. But nobody's got the fortitude to put their arms around it and say, you have an obligation. You're a Jew. You're gonna, you were born a Jew. You're going to die a Jew. And when do you have the recognition of your obligations as a Jew? We are different. We have obligations. And we have to fulfill them.